WTF Weekly with Kiki and Indy, where we talk about celebrities like Taylor and Katie. Yeah! Hello! I'm Kiki. And I'm Indy. And this is WTF Weekly. It's been a pretty exciting <laughs> week. We always start out by saying that. Yeah, it actually has been a pretty busy week. Such a good week. <laughs> uh, we saw Vance Joy in session at Atlantic Records earlier this week. Oh my god, that was amazing. So cool. He played his song Saturday Sun, and uh, I think there was another one that I'm forgetting the title. <laughs> but it was really good. Did he, he play just, Riptide? He did not. Oh. He did not play Riptide, however, we did ask him about it. Um, he played the ukulele, and then he also played like this other beautiful guitar, and Atlantic Records is beautiful, so that was so nice. What a dream. What a dream. Uh, earlier this week, we also dropped our session with Roses. Actually, it's not a session. It's interview. just an interview. Yes, so that's out. And today, we just released our session with Haley Reinhardt. Yeah, she was um, on American Idol, right? Back in the day. Yeah. Way back in the day. And now yeah. she's <laughs> making it big time. <laughs> she's such a mom. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, she's incredible, really cool, and like super cute. She came in here and was like, we're, like wearing these really funky sunglasses and really pretty eyeshadow. She's awesome. Super retro. Yeah, very retro. Colorful. Yeah. And also really exciting, last weekend we aired our very first episode of the Babel Block Party. And uh, there were a lot of awesome sessions and concerts and interviews with Portugal the Man, Izzy mm -hmm. Bizu, Mumford um, and Sons, The Suffers. Really yeah. cool. Some and of our best sessions, interviews, and concerts that you can find. So you guys should download YouTube and watch it every Saturday for the next 13 weeks. It's on cable. Yeah, channel 186. Yeah. Catch us there. We're your hosts. 8 p.m. Eastern this yeah. Saturday, episode two. Yeah. Cool, so with all that shameless promo, shall we dive in Let's to our first story of the week? Do it. Awesome. So for our first story, this is actually kind of a sad story. Um, Lana Del Rey was almost kidnapped after her show in Orlando. Yeah, so someone by the name of Mike Michael. Hunt. Oh my gosh. Which is Stop. a horrible name. Michael. That's Michael, Michael Hunt. Hunt. Let's just never say that again. Well, on the internet, that's how you type it. So what I'm, like, what well, I'm saying is not bad. It just happens to sound that way. Well, I read it out and I was like, wait, this is weird. Because someone, the person or the author who said, say it out loud, and I said it out loud to myself like three times and I didn't get it. And I was like, And all oh. the writers around you were just like, yeah. what's going on with India? <laughs> yeah, I said it like a table surrounded by other people. Traumatizing. So I was like, oops. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so Michael, we'll, we'll call him. That's why he's so messed up and has such a long criminal record, by the way. Like, he must have not been very popular on the playground. He must have name. been teased a lot yeah. as a child. But yeah, he, 43-year-old uh, Michael Hunt um, has been stalking Lana Del Rey for a couple months, actually. Um, on, his, on his Facebook page and Twitter page, he had mentioned her name, <laughs> called her a queen, which to me is not so offensive. He, he threatened her <laughs> and used her real name, too. And you, Yeah, used her real name, which I forget. I don't know. Yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. But um, <laughs> basically, he um, was caught going to her concert in Orlando with intent to kidnap her and with a knife. <laughs> yeah. So this is no laughing matter. It's actually terrifying. But um, thankfully, she's safe. Uh, you know, the she, oh, she, was aware of, she was aware of him, so she yeah. felt, uh, yeah, she didn't feel safe. So the cops knew about it. And they, they like, I mean, if you're making threats to her on social media and stuff like why would you show up to her, like why would you buy a concert ticket and show up with a knife like obviously people are going to know who you are right right and be looking for you 
but yeah. Thankfully, the OPD caught him right in the nick of time, he's, and he's still in jail. Yes, Orange County Jail. All right, well. And he has a very long criminal record. I think. Oh yeah. I forgot the the exact number, but it was sixty something. Yeah. Arrests or whatever. Sixty two or sixty seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One or one or <laughs> two of those, uh, and they were all for like violence or drugs. Jeez, it's so, so scary. We got our shame, shame tambourines. <laughs> so Michael Hunt, this one's for you. Shame, shame, shame. Freaking shame. 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 Ah, okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, not awesome. It sucks for him and for Lana. Sorry. Yeah, it does. I think she needs to go to the garden and pick out herself a fresh new flower crown. <laughs> yeah, Make all everyone's the pain happy. Go away. Everyone is happy when they get flowers, so yeah. she'll be fine. <laughs> Um, actually, she ended up playing in, uh, I think, Atlanta, maybe in Georgia, I think, um, the day after her show in Orlando. And she tweeted saying that she was fine, but then as she was performing in Georgia, she actually broke down in tears and said, you know, I actually thought I was fine, but I didn't think I'd have all of these emotions just pour out of me on the spot. And her fans were freaking out like yeah. just everyone was like oh my god oh my god Lana no don't cry like yeah it was wild but it sucks I mean that's a really traumatic experience yeah she must have been going through a lot of different phases of emotions I don't blame her yeah it must be hard to like stand in front of a crowd after that you know mm -hmm. totally well we're really glad she's safe and sound, sound. yeah Speaking of being safe. And sound. <laughs> Taylor <Sorry>. Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift is safe from ever being poor, considering she just bought a whole block in Tribeca. Ring the shame bell for Taylor Swift. Oh, all right. Because this girl spends money like it's nobody's business. I mean, she just bought an entire block in Tribeca. She um, already had a second story apartment um, on, in the same street and then decided to buy a loft next door. Mm -hmm. uh, that cost, uh, like, I think it was. To 18 million. And yeah. then her second story apartment cost 20 million. And then she also got, I think, maybe an, either another floor in that apartment or another building next door. Yeah, she also got another floor. I think the, the, the building where she bought the two rooms and combined them to right. make a penthouse, I think she built another unit in that building. Same. Okay, yeah. And. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she that spent a total of like 50, 50 million, million on this one block. Mm -hmm. And the, the latest unit she bought wasn't even on the market. Right, yeah. I wonder what she did. She probably was like, I'm Taylor Swift. <laughs> you need to give me your home. Yeah. And they were like, okay, I there's like, nothing we right. could do. I mean, the person living there was probably a some sort of like famous person or rich person in their own right to I mean, be living that's, there. Yeah, that's how it's going to work. I, I mean, these properties are probably just circulating through the rich and famous. Like that's like yeah. she's only ever if she ever needs to rent out her place, she's renting that to Justin Bieber. Yeah. You know, like that's not going to anyone else. Maybe not Justin Bieber because like no one is letting Justin Bieber rent any. <laughs> oh yeah, true. He trashes everything homes. he stays in. He trashes everything. But she would totally give it to like Carly Cloths or something. He, yeah, someone on her squad. <laughs> that's the annoying thing is like she has this banging like apartment sitch going on. And like, you know she's not gonna use it for good. Like she's just gonna fill it up with cats and like use it to like have baking parties with like baking Carly Cloths and Martha, what's her friend Martha Hunt? Is, yeah. that, is that who it is? She'd just be like reenacting bad blood over with and her over cats. Again forever. Yeah. Uh, um, also Orlando Bloom, amongst other celebrities, lives in that same building and I was thinking, like you mentioned earlier, about how Katy Perry used to date him, and that might cause some drama. I to I totally thought of that as well. Yeah. And I was like, wait, didn't they date? And I was like, no, he dated her arch nemesis, Katy Perry, for a long time, and on and off. They're still on and off, I guess. 
Yeah, I think Katie Cat um, really needs to watch out. They are still on and off. I think they went out on a trip together somewhat recently. Like at least, I think in like the past year. Yeah. Right. They definitely. Went, they went like fishing or something. <laughs> they definitely w went fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Um, and it just bothers me that uh, Taylor. I feel like Taylor is trying to prove it to us that she belongs in, to New York and basically owns it now because we gave her so much crap for putting out that song, Welcome New to New York. Yeah, Welcome to New York. Uh, it's well, like, she deserves it. She was born in Pennsylvania and then she was like Nashville princess for a really long time. Yeah. So then when she came out with Welcome to New York, obviously we're all like calling her out, being like, yo, you're not actually from New York. And now she's just like, you know what, guys? I'm just going to buy this city. <laughs> well, you know what I thought? I thought Welcome to New York, I don't remember the lyrics, but I thought that song was almost like a Miley Cyrus party in the USA, like hopped off the plane at JFK sort of deal. Yeah. And then... But Miley's is way better. But like, yeah, so I didn't really like <laughs> think she was trying to take over New York, like in, in that way. I kind of, but I don't remember the lyrics. Just the way she like glorified New York though was so inaccurate. Right. It was like these streets are a glow. It's like no, they're not. Everyone there's, does like, that. Trash everywhere. Yeah. It's <laughs> like there's homeless people and garbage everywhere. You yeah. Look. I went into the subway yesterday and it reeked of human urine. Yeah. Like just think like, about that, Taylor. Yeah. Like that's, I was like, someone's eating here. Yeah. Like that is reality. Hopefully, with all the money she's spending on this uh, new real estate. I hope it at least comes with like a good pizzeria nearby. Or a bagel spot. Or a bagel spot. Mm. Yeah, or that's probably why she picked that block. I mean, there must be some sort of appeal. <laughs> like there has to be something. Yeah. Maybe like a cat, kitty like dress up store. Like Ew, a place where you could so like- so creepy, but I get dress. it. She's such a cat lady. She would love that. Yeah, she totally would. Well, I really hope she has no regrets in this endeavor. And no uh, maybe it'll make her a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of regrets, <laughs> Katy Perry, Katy Perry regrets writing her song "I Kissed a Girl." So that was in 2008 when it came out, and I think we've really changed conversationally in the past 10 years. We've come a long way. Bisexuality wasn't as talked about back then, or any type of fluidity. Uh, I don't think she so I don't think she entirely regrets it, but she in a recently in a segment called "You Sang My Song" for Glamour magazine, she did admit that if she could go back and make some edits on it, she would. Just because I think it's a great song, I love that song. Maybe it's just because I grew up with it, so I'm like emotionally tied to it. But there's just some lyrics in there that are outdated and it's super stereotypical. Yeah, exactly. And so I think there's like something she could tweak. And now I think people are much more open with, this is what she even said, like, I'll read the quote. Um, but yeah, like people talk about it differently now. I remember when she first came out with the song, like, and she was performing it at Warped Tour. It was this crazy phenomenon. Uh, but she, she said, that was in 2008 when it came out. And I think we've really changed conversationally in the past 10 years. We've come a long way. Bisexuality wasn't as talked about back then or any type of fluidity. If I had to write that song again, I probably would make an edit on it. Lyrically, it has a couple of stereotypes in it. Your mind changes so much in 10 years and you grow so much. What's true for you can evolve. So she's basically like backtracking on it. A yeah, bit. yeah, I mean, it is really funny. It's kind of, if you break down the lyrics, it's like there's one part of the song where she says, my boyfriend doesn't have to know. And it just kind of, and it's just so silly. It kind of makes it seem like being gay isn't a thing. It's just like it's only there for your pleasure, like to just try. Yeah. Like it's not an actual sexuality. So I could see why she wanted to, especially with everything going on and, and all the movements too. Like she probably wanted to address that, which I think was smart because it is kind of embarrassing to have a song like that. Like I. I love the song, and like I'd sing it all the time shamelessly in front of my parents. I know, <laughs> which is pretty Same. bad. And they never freaked out or worried, so that's good. Yeah, but like, and I, I think it's great, but it is kind of like embarrassing to look back. And it, 2008 wasn't that long ago. Like, it's just kind of ten years ago. Yeah, I know, but like a decade. True, but like still. Yeah. 
It's just funny. But uh, yeah, I mean, she's right. The conversation wasn't really out there yet. But can I just say, in 2008, she also came out with another song called You're So Gay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Do you remember that? I was thinking about that. Yeah. Isn't that, that's, I think that's more insulting. It's so bad. It's like, dude, what is your deal? <laughs> She's yeah. on like some power What was shit. the lyric? It was like, you're so gay and you don't but even, you don't like, even boys. like boys. Yeah. I remember I, I didn't understand that when that came out because I was like two. It's just like I rude. Like, what? <laughs> I was like, what's gay? <laughs> yeah, it's so offensive. It's so, so bad. Were you two 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually 12. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh. I was thinking... Oh. I was going back and reading the I Kissed a Girl lyrics just out of curiosity, like, oh, what's that out of date? And I was thinking what I would change. And mm -hmm. like, she says cherry chapstick, like who wears cherry chapstick now? Yeah, it obviously, if she went back and edited it, it'd be like Fenty by Rihanna. Or like Kylie's lip kit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it totally would be. That's like the only part she'd tweak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be real. That song is even, it's better than like Swish Swish. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. It's, it's better so than Swish Swish. so much better. Yeah. Like, people can't, you can't even really compare. I mean, it's silly, but isn't that what Katy Perry is? It's just like over the top silly. That's, that's her persona. I feel like she's just like a parody of herself. Yeah, all the especially time. at this point. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean. There was also another clip in that video that showed a little girl singing firework and it was the <laughs> cutest thing ever. And she was really good. Like she was really staying on pitch and I think she's gonna grow up to be a star, to be honest. It's I mean, so cute. Listen, that video is filled with talented freaking stars. <laughs> mom. <laughs> Who needs, I'm such a mom today. <laughs> Who needs American Idol when you just have Glamour Magazine's fan video, right? True. Like. <laughs> shame. <laughs> no shame. Just, just happy. Praise. So I think we should move on to our speed round segment. That's what we're doing today. I'm having too much fun with this, okay. <laughs> Uh, speed rounds. For those of you who don't know speed rounds, Kirsten and I tell jokes about news stories. They're smaller stories that don't really make the big ones. So uh, Kirsten reads my jokes, I read her jokes, and we haven't heard each other's jokes at all yet. So we're reading he them here for the first time. Excellent. Thanks. Are these all your jokes? No. Oh my god. I know, so intense. I just write so large. Um, it's a freaking fracking novel. I know. Uh, I thought I had a typo, but I don't. Well, I guess it's a righto. <laughs> Can you have a written typo? I just said righto. It's a righto? I don't think so, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Should you start? This one? <laughs> yeah, two days after. Okay. Two days after his baby girl was born, <laughs> Travis <laughs> Scott pled guilty to disorderly conduct for inciting a riot while performing goosebumps. That baby definitely came out of the womb with goosebumps just knowing Travis Scott is her father. <laughs> I didn't realize that was him. He's the rapper that was like inciting a riot. Okay. Isn't that crazy? I was wondering like why he got arrested. Your father. Or, yeah. Um, oh, this is funny. Same. Speaking of Travis Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner named their newborn baby Stormy with an I. Oh, no, 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 it's crossed out. Oh. <laughs> that was a different joke that I was, I was going down a different path. <laughs> okay, I scratch it. that. <laughs> Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner named their newborn baby Stormy Webster. Well, that girl is going to grow up to be either a local news weather person or a member of a scary rock band. As long as Kylie didn't plump her lips yet, we're happy. <laughs> I thought that was good. Yeah. You read that with a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah, so I tried. I think that made it better. Hint, hint. <laughs> Try. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Rihanna just released her Valentine's Day themed sock collection, each going for $125 a pop. How did she know that all I want for Valentine's Day are overpriced with jewel socks? Thanks, Riri. <laughs> yeah. 125 for yeah. a pair or like each? Each, I don't think they're selling <laughs> socks separately. Well, I don't know. I feel like it's a good money move. <laughs> Riri's making money moves. <clears throat> okay. Drake recently stopped by, stopped by University of Miami to give them a $50,000 check. The only condition was that he wanted to film it for his new video for 
God's plan, selfless. <laughs> that basically wasn't a joke. <laughs> that was just real. Nothing I say is a joke. It's just like <laughs> reality. Selfless. Okay. Breaking news. Quincy Jones reveals the Beatles are the worst musicians in the world. Breaking news update. Quincy Jones is the most hated man in the world. <laughs> Mom at your service. That was a mom joke. Yeah. That was a very intense mom joke. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, shame Quincy Jones. I know, how rude. Shame, shame, shame. Just rude. Everyone he's been loves like, this. <laughs> well, he's just been so, also, he, didn't he like shame Taylor Swift? Yeah. Well, he oh, he sh shamed her songwriting, but I agreed with that. Yeah. Cool. Wait, you have one more. Oh, uh, I do. <laughs> Lucky, yeah. lucky for the audience. Yeah. PepsiCo <laughs> is making a new line of Doritos that are female friendly. What? Yes, because women always feel super ashamed when car bloating in public. If only Pepsi could concentrate on making a sugar free, chemical free can of soda. Wait, is that true? Yeah. Apparently, the new Doritos for women are supposed to be softer so they don't crunch as loud and they don't have like as much powder that leave on your fingers so like us Why is that like a because we're super thing. ladylike so we don't have to lick our fingers oh please but guys love doing that so oh uh, dumb yeah okay pepsi is a freaking shame i'm surprised they they haven't um gotten rid of the ceo yet there oh my god i know what is going on over there it's crazy especially in this time anyway I think that wraps this week's episode <laughs> of WTF Weekly. I'm Kiki. And I'm Indy. And bye. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>